Hello everyone! Intel has just launched its full series of 10th gen processors. You might have heard about the confusion between the Ice Lake and Comet Lake processors and might have wondered what the hell is Intel doing? Is it worth upgrading to the 10th gen right now? Watch this video and I will help you decide. Intel launched its 9th gen processors a couple of years back on the LGA1151 socket which was called the Coffee Lake. In fact, even the 8th gen processors were on Coffee Lake. And now Intel has launched the 10th gen on LGA1200 called the Comet Lake. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, take two. And now Intel has launched the 10th gen on the PGA1526 called the Ice Lake. Okay, hang on. We need to clear this up first. So what really is this confusion about? Let's make a quick comparison between the Ice Lake and the Comet Lake. I know this video is about 9th gen versus 10th gen, but we need to figure out what is 10th gen first. So Intel launched these two processors called the Ice Lake and the Comet Lake and both are 10th gen processors because of which Intel is facing a lot of criticism. Ice Lake was launched in 2019 with the 10 nanometer technology with the Gen 11 graphics, onboard AI to predict the workload and an integrated Thunderbolt 3. Then in May 2020, they launched another processor with the LGA1200 socket called the Comet Lake, creating so much confusion with the consumers. Let's do a quick comparison between Ice Lake and Comet Lake. Now this is what Intel says about their processors. Ice Lake is supposed to have built-in AI to predict the workload and to get things done faster. The new Gen 11 graphics called the Intel Iris Plus is supposed to give a stunning experience with entertainment. Whereas they say Comet Lake is focused more like a productivity powerhouse which gives a better performance in multi-threaded workloads including commercial segments. Well, I'm still not convinced why they should have launched two processors in the same generation. Ice Lake works on the 10 nanometer technology but it still consumes more power than Comet Lake. Comet Lake has more cores, more threads, more cache, a higher turbo frequency, higher graphics frequency and pretty much everything else the Ice Lake has. Then they make it more confusing with the nomenclature. There's hardly any buzz about the Ice Lake online and I recently saw this on the Intel website. Is Ice Lake going away soon? Okay, now considering all this, I think we have to compare the Coffee Lake with the Comet Lake and not with the Ice Lake. Okay, now let's get back to our original topic, Gen 9 versus Gen 10. Gen 10 comes with a new LGA1200 socket aka Comet Lake with a better power supply architecture for better clock speeds. And with the new socket comes a new chipset which is the 490. There are no major differences between the 390 and the 490. The only thing that I noticed was 490 is PCI 4.0 ready. The IGFX is the same as the previous generation which is the UHD 630 but now it comes with an integrated Thunderbolt 3 support the Wi-Fi 6 and hyperthreading is now available on even the i3 and the i5 of the 10th gen. Now this is the overall comparison between the 9th and 10th gen but to get a better picture we need to pick similar models from both the generations and compare them. Let us start with the i3-9320 and the 10-320. Both are based on the 14 nanometer technology and this is what Intel's recommended price is. Both have 4 cores but the 10th gen has 8 threads. It has better base and turbo frequencies of 3.8 and 4.6 GHz. It has a similar cache, similar bus speed and now consumes 65 watts on maximum load. The memory specifications comparatively look much better. Now supports 128 GB DDR266 and up to 41.6 Gbps of memory bandwidth. The processor graphics specifications looks pretty similar. Both of them have the UHD630 with a marginal difference in the max resolution. Under advanced technologies it's pretty similar but the most noticeable difference is that hyperthreading is now available on i3. The security and the reliability features are also almost the same. So I would say the 10320 is marginally better than the 9320. Now let's get to the i5 series and compare the 9600K with the 10600K. The essentials looks pretty much the same, both are on 14 nanometer technology, but now you get a fan and a heat sink inside the box. The number of threads have increased to 12, the base and the turbo frequencies have increased to 4.1 and 4.8 GHz. TDP has gone up by 30 watts and there is no difference in the memory specifications. Processor graphics again is the same, both of them use the Intel UHD 630 and a slight difference in the max resolution on HDMI. Expansion options are the same, the same package specifications and under advanced technologies like discussed earlier, the only and the big difference is the hyperthreading that is now available on the i5 10 gen. 
and no noticeable differences in the security and the reliability features. Now let's get to the i7 range and compare the 9700K with the 10700K. Absolutely no differences in the essentials except that you get a fan and a heatsink in the box. The number of cores are the same at 8 but the number of threads have now increased to 16. The base and the max turbo frequencies have now moved up to 3.8 and 5.1 GHz. And with that the power requirement has also gone up by 30 watts. Still supports 128GB of RAM and now supports DDR4-2933 and max memory bandwidth has now gone up to 45.8Gbps. No big difference in the processor graphics, still uses the UHD 630 and a marginal difference in HDMI max resolution. Expansion options and the package specifications remain exactly the same. Advanced Technologies is also pretty much the same, noticeable difference is hyperthreading and Turbo Boost 3.0 and no difference in security and reliability features. Now let's compare the top of the line i9s, the 9900K and the 10900K and the only difference I see in the essentials again is the fan and the heatsink included in the box. Cores have gone up to 10, threads have gone up to 20. Base and the turbo frequencies are now at 3.7 and 5.3 GHz. Just as a comparison, the fastest AMD Ryzen available today can be turbo clocked only to a max of 4.6 GHz. With this, the power requirement has also gone up by about 30 watts. Both generations support a max of 128GB, 10 gen now supports DDR4-2933 at a max memory bandwidth of 4.8GBPS. Again, no difference in the graphics as both of them use the UHD 630 and a marginal difference in the max resolution on HDMI. And there's no difference in expansion options or the package specifications. The 10 gen now features certain new technologies such as the thermal velocity boost and the Turbo Max 3.0. And the security and the reliability is almost the same as the previous gen. These are some street price comparisons of similar models of both generations. Big question, should you actually go in for an upgrade? Right now I have a Hackintosh which is running on an i9-9900K and I don't think I will upgrade this to the 10900K. But I am planning to build a couple of new i5 systems and I am planning to go for the 10th gen for that. Once I get my new i5s, I am going to make an unboxing video and a review of that. If you've liked my video and want to watch more videos like this, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel.